on the October 25th edition of the PFF Forecast. We've got our regular, very interesting three questions for the week that we're going to try and answer. We've got the college pick of the week, which we'll talk about briefly. And of course, all of the games for week eight. Let's rock. You forgot the let's Brock given tonight. It's fair. That's I okay. I'm not we're not gonna talk about Thursday night football. Because it sucks. I, hurtful, truthful. Here's what I We're all about truth here on this podcast. I do have an despite actual despite the hurtfulness. I, I have an actual question though. Um it's October, Brocktober, mm-hmm. which uh is open enrollment season. People forget that. People forget that. And um, I, I don't, I just don't understand why I would enroll for health insurance. Oh, interesting. Sounds like a, sounds like a collection of events with uncertainty and payouts. Uh, let me, do you mind? I, I don't mind, actually. I, I actually want to see this. So, it, 50% of the time, I, I get a cold. Uh and that turns into pneumonia at 25% of the time. And 100% so, of the time, it turns into a, twi- a, a, a profanity-laced tirade on my Skype. 25, 25% of the time, I, I will get, I'll hurt my knee. But 10, 10% of that time, it's actually going to be seriously hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jimmy Fallon, keep going. So... If I buy the, if I buy the health insurance, look, look, I I understand the idea. Oh, you do? I get it. Oh, let's but see it, what happens if that's actually true. But it doesn't work that way. What doesn't work that way? Just because I buy health insurance doesn't mean that I'm going to get sick and need it. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, think about it this way: if I buy the health insurance. I'm putting myself in a situation where I know it's okay to get sick. That's true. There is an immune effect there. So putting that into, so now I think I've got it. I think, I think it makes sense for me not to get health insurance. Oh, I, I think so. I would take that shot. I, I understand. Hey, hey. What the, I understand what the people are saying. I get the analytics of it. Okay, you I do. really do. I understand it. In the, in this world where you're where it's you versus mortality, you're the underdog. Bills minus three. Looks genius. <laughs> uh, no health insurance. I'm going to send this off right now. Seems sense. like you've assessed the uncertainty properly, George. I, I told you. It's a great you, week for that. I get. You do I get it. I get it. I understand the idea, but it's wrong. It is wrong. Because the numbers. your numbers can't account for the simple fact that if I know it's okay to get sick, I'm going to get sick. It doesn't take buying the health insurance actually increases my chances of getting sick. That's true. It increases it from from X to 100%. If I just don't buy it, I'll know I can never get sick and I'll never get sick. And you'll continue to work out twice a day. I can assume and eat kale. It, it's basically it's like a PAT. Straight. Yeah, yeah. It's like a 100% thing. Some teams go a whole season without a missing a PAT. A whole season without missing a PAT. Some human beings Justin go a whole Tucker life. Justin Tucker went 8 years without missing a PAT. Some so, some humans go a whole year without getting sick. So to, to give myself the opportunity to get yeah, sick. That's true. It, I, it all of a sudden takes my chances of getting sick from 50% to 100%. See, listen, I think that's great, right? Because I like, could die by getting health going insurance. Going for two means you're telling your team that they're underdogs. You buying health insurance is telling your body and your immune system. You can't am- handle the truth. Yeah. I mean, like, how would, why would you tell your body it's an underdog against mortality? I don't. Never. I you wouldn't just don't do, do that it. To myself. Just don't do it. All right. I think we've squared this one away. Um, the two point thing is really funny. <laughs> it's it's really funny. And here's the funniest part. I, maybe you could disagree with me, but um, this summed it up for me perfectly. So on the Monday night broadcast, 
You've got Tess, Wit, Bug. It's it's <laughs> Christmas, is what it is. Tess, Wit, and Bug, and they go for two, and Witten is doing his normal thing where he doesn't really say much, and Booger <laughs> Booger realizes that he's got an opportunity to really make a statement. So he goes a hundred percent in on <laughs> he goes a hundred percent all in on this being a terrible idea. That's Bug's hand. Yep. It's like a route tree. <laughs> so so he is a hundred percent this is a bad idea. And what summed up this situation perfectly is poor Jason Witten, who I think it's fair to say has struggled. Okay. No, like I'm sure he's trying. He has struggled in situations. Yep. He either listens to the producer in his ear, shocking, or out of like his own actual intelligence, figures out by and large the reason for doing this, and says it on air, which was impressive. He as walks hell. himself into it, which is great. Yeah, amazing. And Booger, who is assume you know presumably still getting the information yeah. in his ear, unless the connection to the high chair broke. Maybe the angry Falcons fans who couldn't see the game because of Booger's enormous high chair <laughs> cut the cord. Who knows? This, he doubles down. He refuses yeah. to acknowledge it. And that that is what happens all the time is people who are too proud yeah, I mean, it's, don't want to admit that they are wrong. Yeah. So he goes on SVP later. SVP says, hey, man, it checks out. I thought it was crazy, too. Got, you know, guys that understand how math works told me it was right and i believe it there's nothing pro there's nothing more profoundly american than being factually wrong and doubling down on your incorrectness man it's rough it's rough and we're all we are all guilty of this Mm -hmm. all the time right it is really hard to admit that you're wrong um but to do it on national tv (laughs) repeatedly or national radio repeatedly is hilarious yeah for sure really i get it though I understand it. It's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so funny to me. And again, like I said, like it's whether you're talking about like sport. Sports are so much fun because like it, there's no consequences to being like unless you're I guess you're betting on games, but like there's no consequence to being like, oh yeah, I used to look at the game this. I used to think running backs were valuable, and now I don't. Cool. But like you know, it's every walk of life, right? Like whether it's you know, you know sports, policy, everybody just like doubles down on their bad opinion, even with presented with evidence. Well, the evidence was wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Me drawing decision trees on YouTube here. Yeah. Uh, Oh, that's Booger's hand again. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, you, we did do a video on it. Uh, but why don't, we could drop, we could go through it real quick. Yeah, let's do it. I, I think that's great because not everybody watches our YouTube video. I, I would say it would be great to watch the YouTube video. but maybe, yeah. we, we, maybe we can make it more simple here. Yeah. So you have the option to either kick the PAT mm-hmm. or go for two. Let's say you kick the PAT. And we're going to assume that it's 100%. You always make the PAT. That's that's in favor of the PAT truthers <laughs> out there, right? Saying that it's a 100% proposition. So you always get the PAT, and we'll assume that your defense gets a stop, and you go score another touchdown, mm-hmm. which regardless of whether you go for two or kick the PAT, has to happen, right? So if you kick the PAT, you go to overtime, and you're the underdog. So you're probably not going to win every, every uh, or more than 50%, mm-hmm. right? Or even 50%. But we'll assume, because it makes it easier for the PAT people out there yeah. that you win 50% of the time you go to overtime. So if you kick the PATs, you go to overtime, you win 50% of the time. So let's think of it as a hundred games. Yep. Okay. So if you go to overtime, you're going to win 50 of those hundred games. If you have to make that same decision a hundred times. Yep. You got it. it. Checks out. Yeah. Okay. Now let's assume that you, let's take a look at the two point conversion. So if we, if we take the giants offense versus the Falcons defense, we have a model that computes the conversion probability. We give it a 45% chance of conversion. Mm-hmm. Okay, so take us through the first situation. We get we get the two, first two-point conversion. Yeah, so and again, we're assuming that both touchdowns are scored. There's no intermediate touchdown by the other team, which is actually what happened. Like, there was a field goal in the, in the Monday night game. But, like, 45% of the time you make the two-pointer, and then you score again, and you kick the extra point. And again, we're assuming that's 100%. Those are 45% of those games that are thrown, like there's no uncertainty associated with anything other than that first two-point conversion. And like that's almost the 50% you need right away anyway, right? Yeah. And then, of course, there are some where you miss the, you know, miss the two-pointer right Hold away. 
So you're saying that if I go for two, 45% of the time, I win the game? Assuming you score both. Uh, assuming you score we, both touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, we've already assumed that. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like simplify yeah, yeah. this here. So you have 100 games. If you go for two, 45% of the time, you're going to win. So 45 of those 100 are wins. Mm-hmm. Okay, now next situation, you go for two, you don't get it, right? That happens 55% of the time. And then you have to go for two again on the second touchdown, and you don't get it again. Yeah, and that in that case, that's you know about thirty percent of the games, right? So in those thirty percent of the games, again, you sort of know the outcome. And I think I think it was Brian Burke on Twitter said like part of this thing is information, right? Like the fact is is why you know people would say, well, why don't you go for two on the second touchdown? Well, actually, going for two on the first touchdown completely eliminates the uncertainty associated with knowing whether or not you need that two pointer. Like the the Titans uh, the Titans uh, Chargers game was one of those where like people were like, well, should they gone for two? Should they not have gone for two? Well, it'd be really nice to know right away right like we're we're only you know it's a tie game we can kick an extra point to win or we're down by two we have to go for two to win like you've taken all that decision making process out of that like most i would say leverage situation yeah you've you've meandered off trying to make this simple here (laughs) and you're just no i'm not fluttering around okay so 30 of those games we lose that's what you were saying. Mm-hmm. So if I go for two, well, we've taken care of 45 of the games where we win because we get it. We've taken care of 30 of the games because we lose because we don't get either of the two-point conversions. What happens to the rest, right? So that means that you miss the first two-pointer, and then you get the second one to tie it and send it into overtime. Yep. Right. So that's 25 games left over. We're going to assume you win half of them. <laughs> What's half of 25? Can you do that? It's somewhere between 12 and 13. Okay, so we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the team that's favored. We'll say the Falcons win 13 of those games. Again, we're hurting our, our, the way that we look as two-point conversion, uh, the two-point conversion Not side. So much. we only win 12 of those 13. So we have 45 wins plus 12 wins, 57. So I win 57 of those 100 games when I make the decision to go for two versus the 50. Can you, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to. Correct. It's 57 is greater than 50. The mouth, the mouth opens towards the bigger number. If you're listening to this and you can't see it, then you're missing drawings by Eric, which is impressive. Okay, that was enough. Let's roll through these three questions very quickly. We're going to put a timer on this. It's going to be at most a minute. I need to meander a little bit, though. Nope, no meandering. That was way out there. <laughs> Went from tell us how many games we win with this decision to I thought the, I thought the is po- information needed. I thought the information part is actually sage. It is, but we're trying to explain this in the most simple way possible. The okay. simplest way possible. It's okay. We'll get better at it. Um, is the loser of the 9.30 a.m. London game done? Is this a loser leaves town match? <laughs> Technically, both losers are leaving town. Or winners and losers are leaving town. So, Philly or Jacksonville, does the loser of this game still have a shot? Uh, no. I, I mean, I think like from the perspective of the, of the team that loses, Philly would be on a two game losing streak, and I believe what four or five, five of six, something close to that. Yeah. yeah. And again, like we think Washington will win against the Giants this week. We think Dallas will be at least a little bit improved with Amari Cooper. They're just behind the eight ball, right? And and coming back from a bye might help, but three and five is tough to come back from uh, in the NFL. From the perspective of Jacksonville. I think numerically speaking, right, so we would have Jacksonville trying to find their win total here at about 7.1 wins right now. So they're like, they're projected far lower than the Eagles. So losing would would sort of like be what's expected here. But if, let's say Miami in the Brocktober wins tonight, Mm -hmm. Houston would be 500. The best that, you know, the, the best that the Titans could be after this weekend would be 500. The Jags would just be a game behind that, so I think numerically they probably have a better shot. But you I think are fundamentally, a l- literal meandering garden path. You are just a meander. I'm, I'm getting to the, the answer. It was a simple question. The answer, whatever your answer was, is wrong. The correct answer is that neither of these two teams are done because the both of these co- uh, divisions suck. They are terrible. You're throwing a lot of shade at the Washington Washingtons. Yeah, they suck. All right, which four and three team? Well, that was over a minute and thirty by four seconds. I'm sorry. Which four and three team won't make the playoffs, and which three and four team will make the playoffs? This is an interesting question. Okay, so let's start with the four and three team that won't make the playoffs. Who do you think it is? I think it will. By the way, it's Miami, Cincinnati, Baltimore, and Houston. Yeah. Um, I think the most likely of those is Miami. To not make the playoffs? Yep. Couldn't agree more. 
They suck. Uh, three and four team that will make the playoffs. So three and four teams. We've got um, Dallas, Philly, Jacksonville, Tennessee, Denver, Jets, and Atlanta. I mean the the PFF forecast would would imply would need to imply that it's the Falcons. Um, <laughs> that said, they've already played five home games. So. I think it's I think it's the Eagles. It's not Dallas. Sure as hell is in Dallas. Uh, it's not Jacksonville. It, all these teams have crappy quarterbacks, except for the Eagles and the Falcons. And the I just think the Falcons have a much harder division to to make it through. Yeah, and I think that that's we actually still would have the Philadelphia Eagles in the playoffs. I think from a percentage wise, if the season were to end, you know, the yeah. simulation uh, would have them in the playoffs. So I I do agree. I the Falcons are just like near and dear to us, right? Yep. But you know what? All good things come to an end. That's right. All right, last question here. Uh, this is a good one. So which teams have their quarterback situation figured out, or maybe the better way to ask it is which teams need a quarterback, will need a quarterback next season if they want to compete in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I mean, I think that's interesting. Let's make a list. All right, so I think Miami is on that list. Yep. I think... Um, the Giants? I think the Giants are on that list. I think this is low key, but I think Tennessee's on that list. Wow. Yep. Okay, so Dolphins and Giants, no one's arguing with. So how how much different is the Tennessee quarterback situation than the Dolphins quarterback situation? Very different, I think. I don't think I think Marcus Mariota has had a much a much harder season, by the way. Like he's dealt with a lot of of, of things. Don't disagree. And I think he offers way more than Ryan Tannehill does. He's a mobile guy. You can do a lot of different things I, with him. Tannehill's mobile. He played wide receiver in college. He has a knee brace the size of Florida well, that he, he wears. He's coming off of two ACLs in a row. Right? So therefore not mobile. He's like you in flag football without cleats on. Jeez. Strong arm at least. All right. Uh, <laughs> that worked for you. Okay, so the <laughs> Dolphins are for sure there. The Giants are for sure there. Are there any other teams... So I could actually argue Oakland. that the Dolphins, I would argue potentially that the Dolphins and the Raiders are more in the for sure needing a quarterback camp than any other team. And here's why. The Giants have Kyle Loletta. I love Kyle Loletta. Uh, we know. Yes. Just saying. He's going to get a chance here. He better get a chance here. I think the Dolphins are the most. I think the Raiders and the Giants are right behind them. And you're going to put the Titans up. I'm going to put them in the second tier here. And I'm going to put Jacksonville with Tennessee as well. I think Jacksonville okay. bought into Blake, but I think... So, you're you're wrong. The Jaguars go in the for sure need a quarterback discussion. Okay. I mean... The Titans don't for sure, like, absolutely have to get one. These other four teams do. Okay. I don't disagree. I mean, I the thing with Tennessee is that, like... Have we ever seen Mariota's best, right? We saw him. He had a good year in 16. He broke his leg in week 17, mm -hmm. right? 17, he was kind of hurt all the time. All right, let's stop with the Mar Mariota stuff. There are more teams that need quarterbacks. Next team that desperately needs a quarterback. I'm trying to... How would Booger wear, uh, how would Booger wear Mariota's partial glove? Okay. The, Bron that work? the Broncos <laughs> for sure need the a Broncos, quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting all these teams ahead of the Titans, and you can't argue with me about this. Mariota, Chad Kelly was the future. Mariota is so much better than every quarterback except for Kyle Loletta on this list and we don't know if Kyle Loletta is ever going to get a chance so we might not Case know. Keenum might take the next step. Uh oh. <laughs> Chad Kelly. What did he do? He went, he was like totally drunk out of his mind and went and sat on like a that random That dude has been couch. kicked off of his high school team, his college team, and his pro team. Look, I get it. I finally get it. <laughs> Poor guy. Prayers and thoughts. Um, all right. Any other teams that you want to put on this list? Uh, I have a, I have a couple. Ooh. Okay. I want to. Well. Okay. Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's put let's put the Cowboys with the Titans for now. This is taking way more than a minute and a half, but it's okay. Um, I mean, I think the Ra the Ravens you have to take off this list because. They have Lamar Jackson. Yes. So they're not. Yeah. And I think if you're looking towards the future, the Chargers and the Steelers. But like we're talking about next year for sure need a quarterback. Okay. What, what were the teams you were thinking? So, Tampa? Uh, I don't have Tampa in there because I 
think Jameis Winston is above average NFL quarterback. Oh, I quarterback. think so too. Um, the Redskins. The Redskins for sure need a quarterback. I hate to do this to Alex Smith because I really like Alex Smith. I think he's probably the most underrated like person in the NFL for what he's been through, the perseverance he's had to remain at that position and continue in his career, much less his life. I really like Alex Smith. That team is nowhere near good enough to make Alex Smith a a playoff winning quarterback, in my humble opinion. Yeah, I mean, he's only won two playoff games in his career. I just put person down because I'm thinking of new variables to put in the green line model, yes, are and they, person has to be a... Are they person? <laughs> we, could, we could use it. We could just throw anything in there. Yeah. Um, but I think the Redskins are one of those teams. I would argue that the Redskins and the Cowboys actually have worse quarterback situations than the Titans. Okay. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's Dolphins, Giants, Raiders, Jags, Broncos. For sure need a quarterback. Titans, Cowboys, Redskins, I think are in the tier slightly below. Although, man, I think Dak is getting very close. <laughs> very close. And I. That, that, team, pl- that, that, that fumble he had. We're not, in his own end zone was just was just magical. Oh, cannot talk about it. So that's that is eight teams that need a quarterback. And I think the cool thing to think about here is like the team that gets the number one pick this year could very well be, be a team that doesn't need a quarterback. We talked about this on a uh, PFF YouTube video earlier this this week. If it is a team like the Cardinals, the Bills, the Niners, please God, please God. If it is the Niners and they're able to take that number one pick, if this many teams need a quarterback and Justin Herbert comes out, I'm, I'm getting... I don't think you're thinking big enough here. The The Niners could draft a running back at that spot and be set. Yep, there you go. All right, we're going to move on now. We're going to hopefully answer these questions a little more soundly. I don't know if that last one will, but maybe. Um, I thought the, it was a great question. Yeah, no, it was, but I'm saying answer it on the Sunday night, Monday morning pod. Perfect. Reminder, we always have that every week. It's up for you bright and early because Stopsky stays up with us till the end of time to get it up. Uh, Stopsky, in the person variable, very high. Jesus. Very high. I feel really bad for people that are listening to this and not watching it because Eric is continuing to draw on pieces of paper in, in an unintelligible way and then showing it to the camera. <laughs> making progress. Last week, you were wearing a shirt that you could have got at Pac Sun in 97. So... If you must know, it actually was <laughs> that's that's hurtful. Pac Sun had some cool stuff back in the day. Not to quote the the Hangover, but if you must know, if I bought it at Banana Republic. Um, there is no way Banana Republic sells that. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Man, that says more about Banana Republic. That was that's bad for them. Maybe. Man, I figured you like you're blaming you're blaming the model and not the. I'm not gonna anymore. lie, I figured it was like one of the. 75% off shirts in like Ross and you're like screw it <laughs> just let it go yeah you're younger we only need to save a couple bucks alright before we get to our NFL picks I want to talk to you a little bit about the place to actually go profit off of those picks you want to head to mybookie.ag even if you're not like <laughs> there's a lot of other sports going on right hockey basketball not just football um, and they offer every single game that you could possibly think of multiple ways to bet on all those games all those sports uh season long or game or even player level stuff they make it pretty darn easy to cash out they have great customer service um and they offer in-game live betting which is super cool so if you're watching the game you miss the start of the game you're like hey i think you know this team actually is going to win despite starting 0 for 15 from the field or turning the ball over immediately on their first two drives you can head to mybookie.ag and still get a bet down it makes watching any sporting event 30 to 100 maybe 150 times better i get it i understand the math i understand the analytics oh um, this one actually makes sense so head to mybookie.ag use promo code pff to get a dollar for dollar match on your first deposit it's pretty simple you play you win you get paid one two three Though, does playing one time make playing the second time a hundred percent win? I will have to ask Francesa about that. All right, let's go into uh, the NFL picks. We're going to skip the college pick. If you want to hear a college pick, and you do, and you do, you want to go to YouTube and check us out on the PFF YouTube channel. George George needed you don't a, want to miss this a tissue because right after because you don't want to miss this. Nose. It is a run game battle. And you want to check it out. So head oh. there and check it out. All right. Let's roll through this. We're going to go stop. So you're going to put some time on the clock here. You're going to put 
15 minutes on the clock because you're going to have to leave at some point here. We're going to try and get through this. We're playing, you know, kind of hurt here. Uh, tonight's game, Miami, Houston. Houston favored by seven and a half. Too high, too low? Too high. Yes, it is. This hurts because Brock Osweiler sucks. But seven and a half is a lot. It is a lot. I know the Texans covered this against the Jaguars. It's still a lot. I'm trying not to overreact to what the Texans did against the Jags and Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles is really bad. Blake Bortles, you could make the argument, is playing worse than Brock Osweiler. Oh, I don't think it's actually. I think Tanner, <laughs> I think uh, Brock has been far better than, than Bortles so far, or at least the last month. Brock Osweiler has 111.5 passer rating when clean. Yeah, I mean, I think now, here's the, the thing. The issue is the receivers being out. The for receivers him. being out is gonna is gonna crush him. Um, that I actually don't hate the Miami pick on on Thursday. I, I say that now, and that's just wrong. I do kind of. I hate mean, it. Uh, so so honestly, the, I think it is think the right side. But how confident the are you the Texans? The Texans have been, in my opinion, the most overreacted to team in yes. the entire in the entire league. They you know they they barely cover against Buffalo. They're, they're now dogs of five and a half to the Jaguars, which is way too high, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, now they're seven and a half point favorites to a Dolphins team that's above 500. I understand Brock, but like Houston, Houston should never be like, I don't know. I just don't think they should be favored by more than a touchdown against a real team. Real team. Hurtful. Truthful. Uh, let's go to Let's do it. Let's go to Ravens Panthers. Um, so the, the Panthers are getting two points at home. Does it feel to you like the Ravens got a sort of pseudo victory for missing a PAT to, after scoring a last second touchdown just to go to overtime against the Saints? I see. I see this game in two different ways. The Ravens were up ten points to a good team and lost it and then lost it when they try to come back. Mm-hmm. So people are saying the Ravens are for real because they can compete with the New Orleans Saints, which is a team of four. Right. You know, for us, top four team. Panthers were down 17 to an Eagles team at, on the road. Again, people are going to assume that that's a loss. They're going to assume that that comeback was fluky. Mm-hmm. Um, even down to like the last fourth down, right, The Pan- when the Panthers were trailing by three, makes a huge play to Torrey Smith, et cetera, et cetera. I just think so. Like we've actually been more, lo- we've been lower on the Panthers than anybody this season. We were higher on them last season. So for our numbers to like the Panthers here, I think that there's something fundamentally um, that that leans makes us lean that way. And to me, it's the fact that the you know a lot of impact players for the Ravens are injured defensively. Here's the thing with the Ravens. I you said that the Texans were a very overreacted to team. I think the Ravens kind of are. And yeah. I, I, here's the reason I think that is, is that the defenses of the NFL suck. They're awful. They're dog. I'm not going to make you bleep it out. They suck. So the Ravens being like the only good defense in the NFL, people get real excited about it. Um, I, the Ravens five points better than the Panthers? Right? Yeah. Well, and like, so let's assume like, and, and again, I'm thinking about the spot too. New Orleans was a game. Oh, where are you? New Orleans was a thinking game the where spot. the where the Ravens were 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 supposed to show the league that they were for real, right? And I think in many people's mind they did. A put up or shut up game. Next week they play Pittsburgh at home, yeah. right? They're looking ahead to that game. This game is a non conference game. Well, it's non conference game for the Panthers too. Right, but the Panthers like the Panthers are second place, I think, firmly in their own division. They're not this they're not a spotlight to anybody, right? They're an overlooked team. I they think won last week. Oh, but has anybody really everybody looked at that game and said, Hey, look how bad the, the Philadelphia Eagles pissed this game down their leg. It's not the Panthers were impressive. I don't I would argue that yeah. I don't know if the spot is that different. I, I'm I more the on the Ravens, is, for the Ravens, though. But, but I don't think it's that different for, for these teams. I just think the Panthers are home, and this line is acting as if the Ravens... Are way better than them. Like, all, like won that game last week and got some like freak accident that caused them to lose it. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Okay, so I would take the Panthers getting two at home. So would you. Um, by the way, you can check out all these picks at PFF Green Line. Um, 
for every single game, plus over-unders, which uh, it doesn't like a lot of this week, which is probably because the market has been a total disaster as far as over-unders go. We actually did okay on the last week, but yeah, they've been a yeah, mess. It's, it's really interesting. You know, when you are relying on math to pick games, you win by playing more games, yeah. right? Because that's how you take advantage of the math, right? So it's very unsustainable to be like, okay, I'm going to use my intuition and just yeah, pick yeah. games here, right? Because you're going to fall prey to a lot of the things that the math overlooks. However, in situations where, like over unders, for example, overs just start going through the roof, it is hard for math to pick up on that because it is using historical situations in order to draw you know generalizations well and i think the weird that. part is is that it is very non-stationary and but there are games that i think are fundamentally still the same as previous seasons so if you look at like i would say like jets bears is a game where i think is fundamentally very similar to previous seasons but then the model still has to like chase these like you know, Kansas City versus Cincinnati games or Chase Atlanta versus uh, the New York Giants. And like, it just makes it difficult. I'm actually pretty at peace with the fact that we don't really have any uh, leans on any over-unders this week. Let's talk about Jets-Bears. The Bears are home. They're getting seven and a half. Giving seven and a half. Sorry. Yeah, that seems like a lot. Freudian slip. I don't think the (laughs) Bears are good. I listened to a, a podcast the other day about how all Freudian slips like matter. It's like one of Malcolm Gladwell's things. And it was talking about how Elvis like had this Freudian slip on in one song <laughs> yeah, yes. every single time. Yes, yes. So now that's, that's all I podcast. think about. Yeah, that's, now that's all I think about, and it's playing with my mind. So and interestingly, this market this one opened at seven. If you look at PFF Green Line. We should get an Elvis song for our intro. Yeah. The he's lulls, dead, so we're the not. The lulls get, are great, but he's man. dead, so we don't have to pay royalties. So he's seven. <laughs> Give me the pen. <laughs> he's this it started seven. That's now seven and a half. We would make the number more like six. So uh, that's a good one. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just hard with the Jets because last week we had the Jets plus three, plus three and a half against Minnesota, and they were very much. Uh, this is what the spread should be. Show the people. You can't read that. People can't read any of this. They're looking at this like you guys are idiots. Well, that, that's three. independent of the paper. The <laughs> the uh, the Jets. I think the Jets like put the the Vikings in a position where they could very much be had last week, and Sam Darnold could not throw the ball into the ocean. Uh, <laughs> so it was unless the ocean contained Harrison Smith's hands, and then in which case he was very <laughs> accurate. So like the problem. I think the problem with the Jets is that you're just like you're hoping that Trubisky throws picks, and you're hoping that Ooh. like it turns into like the game like they had against uh, the Indianapolis Colts two weeks ago, and less like the Minnesota Vikings game last week. I love little lobster Trubisk. Uh, here's a question for you: What do you think about Trubisky? Oh, I, I think I think the Bears have made a bunch of good decisions in the last twelve months. I think that the the buying into Trubisky by giving up your first round picks for the next two years is a huge blunder. Thank you. All I asked is because I'm going to continue to pound the table that John Gruden is a genius. He is absolutely brilliant. You should be tanking. You have nothing on your team. Your quarterback is weeping in con- uncontrollably after getting pummeled in the pocket. He is basically Eli Manning, but on the West Coast. It is bad. It is really bad. Get rid of everything. Get all the first round picks you can. You're moving to Vegas anyways. Who gives a crap about the fans that are going to hate you? You yeah. have to think about the long game. But what about, so, so okay, and I, I agree. I don't care that there's players on the team. Everyone's, you watch any like ESPN show and it's like, well, there are players in that locker room that want to win games. Guess what? The players in that locker room suck. That's why they're not winning games. So I don't care about that. That's uh, he, stupid. That's such a weak argument. Here's here's the question that I have though. So, do you think that the do you think that the Raiders specifically targeted the Bears as a team to fleece because because they've been fleeced before by a team from the Bay Area? I don't know. That's true, I guess. Yeah, right. So Trubisky, so Trubisky has been the product of two like the main fulcrum to two like really bad giveaways of draft picks i guess okay i mean because to me the trubisky thing is I think somewhat tra- independent of the gruden thing 
Like I think Gruden's smart for what he did. Oh, I don't. Think I just has... wanted to get into that. Oh, I but see. no. He, so here's. I don't think they targeted the Bears. I think they chose the Bears over the Niners because they thought the Niners would have a better record. Yeah. Now, obviously, with Garoppolo, I think that's probably true. Um, they also probably didn't want to give Khalil Mack to a team that plays in their backyard, even though they're moving to Vegas. I, yeah. I don't know. I, that I think would be um, what you're getting at. Let's All talk. Right. Let's talk about Washington versus New York. <laughs> God. Because Why? this is this is one we've talked about. Why would we do that? And this number has moved. Washington was a one point favorite, and now it is a pick'em. New York is a minus one ten on the money line. So New York Giants are favored here against your favorite Washington football team. Yeah, the Giants are not great. I don't think Alex Smith is great either. You want my reasoning here? Eli Manning is a higher graded quarterback than Alex Smith. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I understand it. <laughs> I understand it. Look, I get it. <laughs> 25, 36, 40, 47, so, 32. I get it. I get it. Counted to 10. So, so my, issue, do my, it. my issue here is I think Washington's team is actually pretty good. Okay. And I think that Alex Smith, Alex Smith is has never been, has this season so far aside from a really really bad Watt game against uh, the Saints has not really been put in a position to have to come from behind and I think his stats are a little bit inflated not inflated like Manning's as such right Watt, yeah, the Giants gave up probably their best defender right they traded one of their starting corners which he hasn't been good but he's valuable right their offensive line is garbage and uh, and Eli Manning's still their quarterback, and he had a good game on Monday night. We know that the zigzag theory of gambling would would imply that he's going to have a a, a, a crap game, game on yep. Sunday. I don't know. Obviously, like you know, we like Washington here, as as I'm implying, but like you seem less into it than I am. Yes, because I d- so I am a believer in like players still caring about playing well and I think Shermer I feel really bad for Shermer actually because I I think he got screwed absolutely screwed yeah his face when Gettleman's doing this is like shoot me yeah and uh, you can tell here's what I will never fault someone for being wrong and then saying oh I was wrong I was wrong right and like his acceptance of you know, trying new things like, like that going for two thing. Like he cares about winning games as he should because he's in his first year and there are players on that team. Uh, this is it for Eli, obviously. And he, I'm sure he's going to do his best. And <laughs> look, like Odell and Saquon are still great players. Uh, right. I mean, it's in, it's in New Jersey. I don't feel great about Alex Smith on the road. He took that great Kansas City offense into New York and pooped himself last season. He also took that great offense into New England. So one game and, sample size, by the and way. And dropped 42 on. I mean, like, I, Alex Smith is a great person. Never variable. forget Cassius. All right, let's look at uh, Seattle at Detroit. <sighs> People love the Lions right now. Love the Lions. I mean, those jerseys are fire. They love the Lions because uh, Matt Stafford's playing really well. Matt Stafford's playing really well, and they just got Damon Harrison. Run, stuffing, machine, carry on my wayward son. Just annihilating people. Would he have like 300 rushing yards last week? He's looking like Todd Gurley out so there. So Stafford has a 107.2 pass rating when clean, 7.38% of his throws are big-time throws, and Russell Wilson, mostly an afterthought this year so far, 114.9 pass rating when clean, 7.84% of his throws are big time throws. Like you're get your better quarterback getting points. Road team off a bye is actually normally like a higher, you know, in terms of points. Like I don't know. The the difficult thing is obviously the West Coast to East Coast, you know, travel and the the losing 3 uh 3 hours in the time zone difference, but I just I just think Seattle's probably a better team here. In a neutral field, and so if I'm going to get three with the Lions, you know, with with the Seahawks here, I'm probably going to back them. You know, I think the Lions will be a fairly popular pick. Yep. 
Um, I think everyone's really sold on Seahawks for a decent reason. So here's what worries me about the Seahawks. If they get down, I feel like they just punt on all the things that, literally, punt on all the things that they, they should be doing a ton of. Our good buddy who, march, who fights the good fight, Ben Baldwin, uh, just hates how the Seahawks never use play action. And it's funny. like Play they, action is for the weak, to be fair. When they're losing, it's a small sample because <laughs> they like never run it. But when they're losing, Russell Wilson has a 158.3 pass rating off play action. They've only done it like 15 times. It's really funny. So I worry about them like getting down. Detroit has a decided advantage, I think, despite how well the Seahawks defense has played. Does have a really big advantage, um, on, you know, when they're on offense. Um, you know, no Earl Thomas, obviously. So, I don't know. I think the Seahawks are the right side, um, but there's obviously some some reason for concern. All right, last game we're going to talk about: Saints Vikings Sunday night. Can't wait. Love Minneapolis. Where should I go eat in Minneapolis? Manny's. Manny's Steakhouse. Yep. All right. Well. <laughs> Empty out the pocketbook there. Um, all right, I'm going to have to try and get through this thinking about my steak that I'm going to have. It's a I, tough I, life because I have to travel. Obviously, it's very hard. Uh, excruciating. If you want it, you can go to Dinky Town to like relive your college life. Uh, you can go. I mean, Minneapolis is a great place. Wait, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Minneapolis has downtown what is dinky town uptown and dinky town what the hell is this dinky town is like a you know a wait that's actually what they call it yes you this could also go to so much you could also go to me so much you, about you you could also go to surly brewery which is amazing wait i need to know why they call it dinky town i actually don't know i just know that it's called dinky town and, and all right places i won't be going dinky town minnesota it's not the, okay it's like downtown, uptown, diggy town. I really hope there are other people who think this is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous and hilarious. <laughs> diggy town. Is Lake Minnetonka frozen over yet? You could even go Lake Minnetonka. If Prince wasn't from there, I would just punt on Minnesota. What about Larry Fitzgerald and Eric Eager? And, uh, no, I'm lying. I actually really liked Minneapolis when we were there during the Super Bowl. I had some great food the last time I was there. I'm very high on what Manny's could bring. Dinky Town, not so much. If you go to Dinky Town, you will also be very high. Uh, people turn the <laughs> podcast off now. So, uh, Saints Vikings, this is a pick 'em, and this is obviously a rematch from that Minneapolis miracle. So, let me ask you this This Vikings team, are they worse offensively? than that uh, team that had the miracle. No. No. I mean, they're I, I probably agree. better. I agree. So I think they're better offensively. How much worse defensively are they? Like, last season in that game, were they the best defense in the NFL? Going into, the se- going into that game, yes. I would, I would agree with you. I, I would say that that is really interesting, and I think you can make the argument that the Saints' offense is better. Their offensive line Correct. is better. We're Michael trying to make Thomas. a case for why this this number has moved four points since the divisional round. Exactly. Yes. Right? So, um, because I still think, and the model still thinks, that New Orleans is the right side. And I agree with that. But it is hard. I am trying to see where those points are coming from because the Vikings were favored in that game. Now, they were favored five and a half to, to start, and then was four five, and, and then it was four and, five, and a yeah. half, and whatever. Um, so, for it to go now to a pick em, it's hard for me for, to see that happening when the Vikings offense has gotten better. So here's here's my thing is I think that the market last year irrationally jumped on the fight on the strength of the Vikings defense. When push came to shove and we saw this again in the NFC Championship game, we saw it in the Super Bowl, we saw it in the AFC divisional round with Jacksonville. When push comes to shove, great offense beats great defense. And so I think a lot of that I think a lot of the the line movement here is almost independent of the strength of the two teams. It's it's the market learning, right? That a, that a, a top ranked defense is impervious, you know, mm-hmm. impervious to a a, a top ranked offense in terms of moving the number. Um, and then I will agree with you. I think the Saints this season are just on a different level offensively. You have to we remember though, last season going into the divisional round, the Saints were 
blowing teams out during the middle of the season and down the stretch they started to struggle a little bit. Right. I think the Saints are on the ascension right now. Mm. And so Saints ascending. Saints ascending. So I think that those are all contributing to it. We, I would say I liked Saints plus five last year in the divisional round a lot better than I like Saints plus one right now. Yes. That, I think, is the big point. So I right? think both of them are Boolean ones, but I'm not as confident in this, in this particular set. Uh, and that's probably why we're not taking them as lock of the week, for example. Yeah. Um, as we did last year. The, please don't remind me. <laughs> Yeah, Cousins has been great. Here's what I'll say about this. The Saints just don't, like, Breeze is just never under pressure, okay? He is clean for days, and his pass rating is 127 when he's kept clean. So uh, crazy. So, like, to, to, to think that the Vikings' defense is going to stop Drew Breeze is sort of asinine to me. Yep. Cousins has been very good, but has literally been under siege. Yeah. Okay. And he's been good when pressured, which and he's is he's been good when pressured. So yeah. I do think part of that is they've schemed for it well, right? He does a ton of rollouts, a bunch of different things like that that sort of help him, you know, mitigate the pressure. But if you're looking for a quarterback that's going that's more high variance going into this game, it is Kirk Cousins. And there is no doubt about it. This game is played in a dome, which is basically a home game for Drew Brees. So, um, I think the right side are the same. And here's the here's another key difference between the NFC cha- or the NFC divisional round last season and the and this game here. Mm-hmm. The Vikings were starting all t- eleven of their right. defensive starters from week one than they were in, in that week. Xavier Rhodes probably not playing. Mike Hughes is not playing at Torres ACL a couple weeks ago. Limbell Joseph questionable. Everson Griffin out. Anderson Dejo questionable. Anthony Barr questionable. This defense could be a shell of itself. So. Um, that that's something also to monitor. I think when you look at Drew Brees, as you said, like even though Cousins has been impressive so far this year, this is a classic situation of the better quarterback getting points. I love it. I love that so much. It's been an interesting uh, first seven weeks of the season. Yes, interesting uh, would be would be a, a, a one way to put it. Uh, but I'm I'm really bullish on the second half. Here's why I'm bullish on the second half. Our uh, our esteemed boss, Chris Collinsworth, humble brag, was saying this the other week. There may not be a season where we have had this many good quarterbacks, this many exciting quarterbacks that maybe we don't know if they're good yet, but we we don't know. And so we want to watch the games, yep. right? And I, I do think there are some top-heavy teams, but you can see any of those top heavy teams losing because it's all offense right now and that's mm-hmm. exciting right um and uh so i'm, I'm pumped to watch yeah i think these games this week. i think there's a lot more clear like i think there was a lot more muddiness at the beginning of the season i think we're going to start to see some clarity i think we're going to start to see some games where there's a decided edge between others we this has been a very underdog you know, heavy, heavy first seven weeks. I think we'll probably start to see some balance here uh, as we move uh, to the second. We still have 10 weeks left of the regular season. So I think that think yeah. it'll be fun. So I think there's going to be some teams that show themselves to be that like 2016 always cover yeah, situation. Yeah. But I'm also excited to see which team and there's that little kind of middle group there. One of these teams is going to get hot, make a run for the playoffs, surprise some people. So it'll be fun. Anyways, uh, you can catch us on Monday morning, bright and early. We're going to take a look ahead to week nine games and give you a quick recap uh, live from Minnesota. I think I'll still be in Minnesota at that time. I'm kind of jealous. I Maybe I'll just Minnesota go to Manny's. I... Maybe I'll go to Dinky Town and record the podcast from Dinky. Go to Caribou Coffee one time for me. God, help us all. It's just, I don't even know what this place is. Um, and in the meantime, you can check us out at... Uh, on Twitter, don't check us out on Twitter. Twitter's overrated. Uh, on profootballfocus.com, better place to check us out. And uh, yeah, good luck this week. See you guys.